What is up everybody in the XRP community, everybody in the digital asset space as a whole. Solomon here, hope you guys are all having a fantastic Thursday. If you see any scam ads on this video, please do not participate in those. So today we are going to discuss the keynote speaker at Swell Global 2020 for Ripple, Sheila Warren. We are also going to discuss some of the documents that she has been in. Namely, the Central Bank Digital Currency Policymakers Toolkit, where XRP is directly called out. All right, let me get into this real quick. There's a little bit of other news as well today. Uh, some with the Bird Wallet, some with Fleet Core, who is a Ripple partner. Uh, we're going to get into the Faster Payments Council as well. So this was two days ago. This is uh, World Economic Forum's Sheila Warren Keynotes Ripple Swell Global 2020. Now, Sheila Warren is the head of blockchain and digital assets team at the World Economic Forum. Now, this uh, event is obviously October 14th and 15th. All right, today, the blockchain and digital currency industry as, is at an inflection point, similar to that of the internet boom of the 1990s. Not unlike the internet's historic impact, these technologies have the capacity to engender greater financial inst uh, inclusion and economic opportunity. Will global policymakers provide thoughtful regulation that both fosters innovation and protects consumers? If not, what are the implications? Well, I want to get into Sheila Warren here, okay? And Sheila Warren is very much so a part, if you're not aware, the World Economic Forum has this agenda that they're pushing out that is basically entitled The Great Reset, okay? This is Sheila Warren speaking about The Great Reset. And I will play maybe about... 40 seconds of this here, but just pay attention. It's very directly about blockchain. A lot of this be, uh, deals in interoperable cross-border data flows. Uh, we know where this all goes, right? You know, the we, the collective we of the Futures Council in the World Economic Forum, blockchain experts, um, we tackled some pretty big things this year and we've enabled transformative processes within industry. Let's talk a little bit about our recent work together the data economy and cross-border data sharing, and also the blockchain bill of rights. It's truly a Rosetta Stone moment in the formation of new world structures. How are you seeing this showing up? And are you seeing it as a moment where people are saying, yes, of course, we need this. Um, if not now, then why not now? Because it's clearly something, as you said, um, that we needed so long ago. But right now, those tectonic plate shifts are occurring and people are falling through the cracks. Yeah, well, I think all of us who are drawn to the blockchain space are similarly minded. You know, we were all we we're all a bit radical in our sort of imagining of what decentralized systems could bring about. So for a little while, my work at the forum was a little bit, you know, trying to bridge the gap between preaching to the choir of the blockchain ecosystem. We all, yes, we all know this, but trying to normalize this technology and the changes it can bring about for, you know, bigger institutions and for incumbents who weren't necessarily as open-minded about the potential of the technology or even about discussing the problem space. So I think we've done a lot of, of great work there together with the council and the work that, that the team has done to sort of, again, socialize these notions of disremediation and decentralization and that technology, you know, can be a non-neutral actor in addressing inequity. Now, the principles themselves, the presidio principles, we call them, which are I apologize. This is a little bit longer than 40 seconds, but I believe it's important to listen to. So I'm going to keep playing until uh, Sheila is done speaking. Are, are a, a form of blockchain bill of rights. Those are output of our council, our blockchain council. And there was kind of immediate agreement by these global blockchain experts. Something like this was needed. It was warranted. This technology is is both, you know, it, it's entering a period of relative early day maturity, but it's also new enough that we have a chance to embed some of these ethics and values into the work that's being done. All right. She is talking about the blockchain bill of rights. If you have not seen the World Economic Forum put that out, I think it was in May of this year. Now, she also mentions a few very important things in this discussion. <clears throat> she talks about cross-border data flows. Later on, she talks about a document that the World Economic Forum put out about interoperability and cross-border data flows and the need for that to be uh, an available, um, well, not even av an available, an embedded, uh, an, an embedded capability within the system. She also talks about how early we are in this space, but that blockchain is occurring to or is coming to a point where there is early maturity in this space. 
And we will move on to a little bit more about what Sheila has been involved in now. If you want to check out this podcast, I very much so recommend watching it. Um, you can go to this link up here uh, and you can find that podcast on the Great Reset from the World Economic Forum. This came out earlier this year, okay? World Economic Forum, Central Bank Digital Currency Policy Maker Toolkit. And we can see this is a you know, center for the fourth industrial revolution. We know that blockchain is one of the pillars of the fourth industrial revolution. And right in the forward here, we've got Sheila Warren again, platform head blockchain, blockchain and distributed ledger technology at the World Economic Forum. Now, interestingly enough, in this same document, and now she is speaking uh, as the keynote speaker as well, talk about digital payments ecosystem and landscape evaluation. In this section, the policymaker considers whether and how the domestic and international digital currency and payments ecosystems influence decisions around central bank digital currencies. Most relevant for retail CBDCs, I believe Bitcoin and Ethereum are in here. Most relevant for wholesale CBDCs, which would deal in uh, innovations in existing slash legacy market infrastructures. They're going a swift GPI initiative here. Uh, they're also going with crypto assets designed for inter or intra bank payments and settlements. And examples directly given are JPM coin and XRP. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that uh, JPM coin is or no, that's utility settlement coin that's taking a backseat now. Um, I'd be surprised and I'm, I'm curious to see what happens with JPM coin, though. Uh, so XRP directly mentioned under most relevant for wholesale CBDC. Extremely interesting. Uh, we also know that Finastra joined the World Economic Forum uh, December 2019. Collaborative efforts during uh, in this press release will help break down industry silos, promote equality and opportunity, and ultimately build a better future. Now, this move is going to see Finastra collaborating with industry leaders and policymakers to drive change across financial services, world trade, and beyond to help build a better, sustainable future. This was December of 2019. Interestingly enough, in October of 2019, Ripple joined Finastra. Well, Ripple has been a part of Finastra if you do the research. Uh, D plus H and another company called Missus actually combined to form Finastra. D plus H was on RippleNet since like 2015 or 2016. Uh, also had patents um, about utilizing Ripple technology. Uh, we know that Finastra had a patent as well. Uh, but we can see down here right in the press release for Ripple and Finastra that the customers of Finastra will have the option to use on-demand liquidity, which leverages the digital asset XRP for cross-border payments. Interesting. Now this is this uh, building a roadmap for cross-border data flows. You can read through this if you want to, it's right on World Economic Forum's website, just even you can even Google search cross-border data flows um, in uh, quotations and then type uh, Finastra, or I'm sorry, World Economic Forum. Found it interesting about, uh, Interoperability here. The opportunity. Regulatory differences across countries cannot be eradicated. They are necessary and appropriate. But there is a clear need, need for interoperable frameworks that can map requirements across borders and create mechanisms to reduce regulatory overload. This project has several work streams. The first is focused on developing regionally based, legally interoperable data flow models. You get the picture, right? This is just about data flowing across borders, across the, um, <clears throat> across the globe in an interoperable nature, uh, and you know the roadmap for building those flows. This is this blockchain bill of rights to the World Economic Forum. Uh, feel free to take a read of this if you want to. Uh, again, you can find this probably right on the World Economic Forum's website, but providing it for scope to you all. Interesting today that we see Fleet Core is uh, going to acquire Apex, a leading cross-border payments provider. Now we do know that Fleetcore is a direct Ripple partner. So, but I will read just a bit of this. Uh, Fleetcore, a leading global business payments company, today announced it has signed a definitive agreement to acquire Associated Foreign Exchange, uh, in other words, Apex, a cross-border payment solutions provider. By acquiring Apex, Fleetcore will build upon its corporate payment line of business and strengthen its position as one of the largest business payment companies in the world. Transaction is expected to close in the first quarter of 2021 subject to regulatory approval. Now, Apex has 35,000 customers, $22 billion in annual volume. So that's, that's not a, it's not a super small acquisition. It's not a super huge acquisition, but it's big. So I'm curious what Fleet Core is up to. We do see here in 2018, Fleet Core and Ripple team up to modernize payments using blockchain. 
And Fleet Corps, La Fleet Corps launched a pilot program with Ripple uh, and Cambridge Go uh, Global Payments as well. The Fleet Corps owned B2B international payments provider. Cambridge processes over 20 billion in B2B uh, business to business cross border payments annually, 13,000 business clients. Under the agreement with Ripple, Cambridge will pilot the use of XRP, the native digital asset of the XRP ledger, and payment flows through XRapid, which is now on demand liquidity. So we do know that Fleet Corps and Cambridge are very much so tied in with not only Ripple, but they've utilized XRP as well. All right. Now, stumbling upon this today, I just wanted to provide this information to you guys. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. This is the Faster Payments Council in the United States. There was a call for nominations um, that were going to be accepted up until May 8th. All newly elected board members in 2020 will receive three-year terms, except for at-large seats, which will receive one-year terms. Now, one of the at-large seats here, interestingly enough, is uh, Pat Thielen of Ripple, uh, and directly mentioned under technology providers for the Faster Payments Council. We can see that here. So I do believe that he was probably um, resubmitted onto the board here. Pat Thalen, technology provider, Ripple. So Faster Payments Council, we obviously know Ripple. There's not a whole ton of technology providers. There are probably a, a few of them on here. Um, let me see if they're listed on. Shazam is one. Uh, FPC. This must is this faster payments council vice chairman uh fi serve so take it however you want to take it all right birds enterprise brd banking blockchain boosted by new compliance strategy very interesting stuff going on with bird and you will see here in a second i hope i'm pronouncing that right if i'm not whatever uh bird is a, a member of the pay id uh initiative uh through ripple uh crypto wallet provider bird partners with cypher trace now, if you are not aware, CypherTrace is that company that just said that they were basically um, <clears throat> bounty hunted out to uh, be able to uh, start tracking Monero transactions. So, and they they did announce, I think it was a week or two ago, that they can do so. Uh, Bird partners with CypherTrace, Chain Analysis, and others to boost its banking enterprise solution. Now, if we go down here into this, this is talking about catering for um, enterprise custody. Now, Bird has launched Blockset. Blockset is a real-time data integration platform used by financial institutions and large crypto firms looking to provide custody solutions. Looking into Blockset a little bit, well, first let's start with CypherTrace. Um, CypherTrace directly mentioning and calling out this uh, Trissa integration with PayID. So interesting, pay attention to that. So Trisha, Trissa is a PayID member. CypherTrace just presenting on that. But... We can see Bird here in Pay ID, which we all know at this point. But this block set, uh, Bird's investor SBI Holdings, this is SBI Japan, is one of Blockset's first customers. Adding that the idea of setting up Blockset came from SBI itself. So SBI came up with the idea of Blockset for this uh, enterprise uh, enterprise custody initiative. Hmm. Okay, SBI initiated the discussions for us to commercialize our infrastructure IP into Blockset. They had a critical need for Blockset for some of their initiatives. That's when we made the decision to expand into the enterprise blockchain market. It took 11 months for Bird to set up Blockset and go live, having started the initiative in early 2018, said Chen. Blockset currently supports Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Obviously, this is XRP, Hedera Hashgraph, and Ethereum networks at launch with more to be added during the year. So hope you guys like this video. I think that the Great Reset rhetoric is uh, very much so in front of our faces. I don't believe that it's um, a complete one world global, one currency to rule them all reset. I think that it's an initiative that's taking place ac across all of these financial institutions about the digitization of society, the digitization of finance, which is, you know, for the people that have money, more important than, than what's going on with society, as uh, crappy as that may be to say. Um, and, you know, interoperability across the board, liquidity, um, and just connectivity. And, you know, we all know that this ends with control and everything like that as well. But I personally, I'm paying attention because I'd like to make a little bit of money in this game at some point here. Um, so I hope you guys like this video. I found the WEF uh, information interesting, especially with um, 
Sheila Warren, you know, basically being on the, the board of that uh, central bank digital currency policymaker toolkit for that document, along with some other things. And, you know, U.S. Faster Payments Council, we could see what Fleet Corps, Fleet Corps is doing. Uh, and, you know, this block set through Bird is very interesting, especially with SBI Holdings apparently um, kickstarting that initiative. So I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. Great evening. Don't participate in scams. If there is news tomorrow, I will present it. If not, I will not. I'm generally pretty quiet on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but we shall see. All right, later.